Hey, this is Glenn. Welcome to another episode of Difficult Questions. This one is on dress codes. The reason I decided to do this is it's always been something in the back of my mind, but recently I started to dress like Rainbow Bright uh, because I keep getting hit by cars and I cannot give any car an excuse to say they did not see me. So even though I like personally dressing to not stand out. I like to blend in with people. That's my personal choice. I've started to dress in very vibrant colors. And one of the things I started to do since I had to wear reading glasses is I've been trying to figure out where to store my reading glasses. And so I thought, well, I'm gonna get rid of two necessities in, in, in one item. And I'm going to start wearing purses because purses stand out. Some people like to call them man bags, but I found, let me get what, uh, what I'm using. I found a perfect purse and it's actually sold as a purse in multiple bright colors. And I wear it and I store my reading glasses in it. It's very functional, but because it's so vibrant, it is also high fashion or fashion, which throws some people off. I was walking along and this elderly lady saw my purse and she said, what's the bag for? And I said, oh, it's for my reading glasses. I had no idea that purses were so great for for reading glasses. It's easy access. It's always there. My glasses are safe. And she laughed and she said, if you're gay. <laughs> and I thought, oh, okay. So our dress is not only our choice, but it's also how the society around us sees us and our reaction to how we want them to see us, which is really intriguing to me because that's always a fight, right? We, we want to be seen and we want to dress how we want to dress, freedom, but at the same time, we need to have the people around us see us the way we want to be seen in order to do things, in order to be things. So there's conflict in that and there's always change. And I don't know what the right answer is, but it's always been a thing in the back of my head because I like to challenge everything and I like to challenge why we dress the way we do. I've always liked to challenge that at the same time. I like to fit in with as many people as I can. So I've never really wanted to dress outrageously or specifically or in a certain style because I always wanted to fit into wherever I needed to fit in, which is again, a, a dress code. But then when I started to work, there are different stipulations, different jobs put on you for what you need to wear. And this has really drastically changed over the past 20 plus years. I would say in 1998 was my first real job out of college, full time. And it was for a casino. I was a stage technician at a casino and we had to dress in black. And it was a certain black that had to look the same black underneath the colored lights. So the dyes that the blacks used had to be a certain thing. And our shirts had to be tucked in and they had to be collared shirts. They could be button up collar, they could be pullover collar, but they had to be collared. And even our haircuts, if you're male, your, your hair couldn't touch your, the back of your collar. At the time, mustaches were allowed, but not beards. And while I was there, they re released some of the restrictions and you could have a beard, but you had to have proof that you had eight days growth or seven days growth before you came back to work. They didn't want stubble beards. And even though men's or 
people's beards grow at different rates and in different thicknesses, the way they decided to make it fair was if you could prove you had seven days off or eight days off to grow this beard, then you could wear a beard no matter what it looked like. And there's always this fight about dress codes. I know my manager, at one point, the dress code said you're, the managers need to wear a tie, but he was also working on stage as an emergency, and he once got his tie caught in an apparatus on stage, and it almost choked him out. And so after that, he said, no matter what, I'm not wearing ties. And I just think, well, there's that, that functionality, and then there's this this image that we need to portray, this image of professionality. And there's that balance. But in the 20 years that I've been working, tattoos have been allowed. A friend of mine in the early 2000s, he had forearm tattoos and lower leg tattoos, and he worked for cruise ships. And they said anybody that works on the cruise ship can't have visible tattoos. So he had to wear, even though he was having cruises down in the Caribbean and in hot areas, he had to wear long sleeves and long pants no matter what to cover his tattoos. Now, obviously, that has has relaxed over the years. Tattoos now are, are allowed somewhat on your neck or your ear or your face. When I was growing up in the 90s, if you had a neck or a face tattoo, you were going to work in a tattoo parlor or a record store. Those were your only two options. And now that it's not like that. I, I was going for a job and they said, you can have blue hair, but you can't wear blue jeans. And I just thought, well, that's a strange, arbitrary thing. Even though my blue jeans are maybe clean, I've had the, the idea of you can wear blue jeans, but just not ripped. But not blue jeans, you have to wear khakis, but you can have any color hair you want. And that color hair really has only emerged in the last 15 years. I worked with a person that had shaved hair on the side, female. And before, even in the late 90s, that would not fly. You would have to be, if you're especially working in, in corporate, that's not going to work. But then again, that challenge is already there, is always there. And if you, what I've noticed is if you are further away from having to make money or make a profit for the company, then your dress code is relaxed. And I really started to find this out when I started doing entrepreneurial stuff. So now I'm not working for somebody, I'm trying to build a customer base. So now my presence, I'm, I'm looking for the easiest way to release money from, or have people be happy releasing money from themselves to me. How can they be comfortable paying me? What image would they be comfortable with? So back to this old lady, older lady that, that called me gay, my purse gay. Does she like buying from gay people? <laughs> Should I be that? Does she not, does she feel threatened by that? Obviously, she's got this idea of what a gay man wears and what a straight man wears. And really that's not here nor there for what I'd be selling, but some people don't appreciate gay people. Now, is their money not worth getting? Some people would say, yeah, absolutely. That's that's worth the fight and I don't need their money. But a lot of companies have historically said anybody's money is good because money is money. How can we not offend our clientele? And I think that's where dress codes come in. Plus history, you think of judges' robes. Why do lawyers have to wear business suits but they can have long hair. I remember seeing the long hair lawyers. They were still in business suits and, and, and long hippie hair, I would call it, which was always interesting to me. But their hippie hair might be tied back for, for courtroom. But if you're a judge, you're not, you don't have hippie hair that, I, that I've seen. You don't have long hair. I just think of all these, these codes. You think of 
women's professional dress versus men's professional dress. I remember Trump and his lawyer, female lawyer, he was wearing a dark suit with a tie, standard fare, standard New York businessman fare, standard presidential fare, dark suit, flash of color with his tie, white shirt. She was wearing a pink, bright fuchsia pantsuit. And I thought, well, why, why can't men wear that without the tie? Why, why are these neck chokers? Why do we always, why are men, professional men, always relegated to dark suit, maybe flashy tie, white shirt? What is, what is that? Do we feel confidence in buying from people that dress like that, that maybe spend that much money on their outfit? But still, women's outfits you spend a lot of money on, but they can be bright colors. They can be patterns. They can be different shapes. Why is it always, if you're a professional man, you need to be in a dark business suit. I think I brought this up before in another episode, but when Obama wore that linen suit once, everyone went insane because politicians, Paul, men do not wear light suits, especially the president of the United States does not wear a light suit. He wears a dark suit. What is that? That instills confidence in some people. Again, do I do I have a gay man as as my president that that offends me? I don't I don't like that. Or should you challenge that? Is it worth challenging that? I know a lot of, let's say, culturally black politicians have really kind of freed up the idea of what the suit can look like and really freeing up the colors and the pat the the cuts. That's that's a cultural thing. That's also something that that can be challenged, but it's not usually challenged from a from a white guy, right? But for, for some reason, we're comfortable with this dark business suit for men. One of the things that I've noticed too is when I was a university professor, I was a I was teaching at universities, three different universities. One, I was a visiting assistant professor for a dance department. Two, I was a resident lighting and sound designer and a, and a lecturer. So I was a staff member that taught for a University of California. And then I was a, a assistant professor for a CSU, California State University. And the dress codes, depending on my job, when I first started, I wanted to be legitimate as a professor, a visiting assistant professor, and I wore slacks and a button-up shirt. And then when I got my job at the University of California System School, the chair of the department said I wore my slacks and my shirt. And he said, you're kind of overdressing here. And he was in shorts, and I was a challenge to his dress. So I needed to be a little more casual. And then when I became an assistant professor, I was trying to dress well, but what I they also needed me to do was work a lot physically in the lighting grids and the sound grids, moving equipment around. So I wasn't going to wear a suit or wear slacks that could get dirty. The problem I found was if I wore jeans and a t-shirt, people treated me not like a university professor. Sometimes we have function dress, i.e. jeans and a t-shirt, so things don't get messed up or you're wearing steel toe boots because you're in a shop where you could get your feet crushed. And sometimes we wear things that show us who we are or who we should be or our status. And, and we have to have crossover. I know riding a bicycle to work always kind of messed me up as a university professor because university professors weren't supposed to wear clothes that you could sweat in. And so I had to figure out a way to change once I got to the university. Same as a motorcycle. I rode a motorcycle. So that's how I get hit by cars a lot, by the way. So when I ride a motorcycle, there's a dress that, because that's your exoskeleton. Things are hitting you. So you have this cover layer, but then you need to look professional once you get to the university or you get to the courthouse or whatever that is. And, and motorcycle dress is not, is not professional. <laughs> so 
What is that? What are dress codes? What should be challenged? When, when and how and why does it matter? Who do you want to buy things from? Do you have expectations in the back of your head of what a certain person looks like? Do they need to fit that? Do you also challenge that? I don't know. Let me know what you think. Thanks. Thanks.